Hello and welcome. You are watching Impact Television, a part of the media ministry from Forgiven Church located in Bluffton and Fort Wayne, Indiana. We pray that you would have an open mind and ears to hear what God would say to you today. So let's dive right in to one of Pastor Scott's or Pastor Michelle's previous teachings taught at Forgiven Church. Enjoy. Would you all please help me welcome and honor Brother Dave Hogan as he comes to give the word right now. You okay? Yeah. Holy Ghost, thank y'all, thank y'all. Excuse me. Thank you, sir. Bless you. Uh, thank y'all. Have a seat. Y'all did good. That, that's great. Thanks. I don't see how I'm going to preach now. That, that kind of emotion. Congratulations. <clears throat> McKenzie, right? Let me show you somebody. Come here, woman. Forty-six years. You want to say something? You sure? Absolutely. Because you can say anything you want. I can back you up. Bless you. I love you. Holy Ghost. Forty-six years. Something to look forward to. Peace in love most of the way <laughs> and what wasn't there of course it's her fault of course <laughs> y'all have an advantage this time with her here I'm a little bit more cheerful <laughs> I'm not quite as soldier -y. Unless I get confronted then, well, reap what you sow. I don't know what to say. <laughs> Holy Ghost. I have to tell you, thank you all for y'all's whatever day this is. What is this? Saturday. Saturday. <clears throat> I've been preaching straight for days on end, and I just came from the center of Amish country, New Holland, Lancaster, Pennsylvania. Then we. Uh, oh, the Holy Ghost smashed us. It was so awesome. Enjoyed myself. We came from there a couple of days, that two days ago. And uh, I'm not tired of this. Got here, went running on y'all's new trail out there. Went down around the Walmart a few times. Pick it up in pennies. Thank y'all for not wanting them. I want them. I'll pick them up, put them in my pouch. Okay, things are good. Say it. Say it again. Say it again. See, see what, what's going on in the world is not what affects me. I'm affected by the Holy Ghost. The worldly system, the negative, the politics, the, the socialism, the communism, the religion, that's not me. And if that's you, yay. You're doing such an awesome job. We're all appreciative of your failure. But as for me and my house, bam. I do apologize to all of y'all. I know I'm supposed to be intimidated up here in Hoosier land. I'm just not. I grow corn also. <laughs> True statement. Uh, now, we, we're, I'm just coming back from literally everywhere. I can talk to you about whatever continent you want to. Uh, I've been in 16 war zones in the last year. I've uh, been in, uh, went around the planet. Since I've seen y'all, I've been around the planet two and a half times. 
230,000 air miles. That's a lots of trouble. And you can't see the wear and tear. It's because I'm I work out. <laughs> I was telling him on the way over here that I just got off of my bicycle. One thousand miles. I'm sixty-five. Bring it. <laughs> Since I've seen y'all, I've run six more marathons. Two of which were 30 milers. I'm incrementing up my mileage. My boys just registered me on a 50 miler. They're doing 100. So I've got to, I got to work out more somehow. I'll make it. It'll be okay. <laughs> I know I'm, I'm 65. And I'm supposed to be broken down, broke, mad, physically sick, wore out. I'm just not in any of those things. I'm sorry to you in your worldly systematic ways how I'm supposed to be. I disagree. And I've on purpose decided to prove it. Now, I've made a couple of decisions. See how they go. Because uh, there's so much to talk about. Every continent, I could hold you literally here for hours. The miracles. Wow. It's, it's awesome. It, it is awesome. I disagree with your opinion. It's awesome. Uh, God's opened up all of Asia to us. Um, uh, all of South America. All of Europe. All of Africa. I don't know what to say to you. I didn't know we was going to do that. Uh, and now we have churches in every continent. Uh, it's quite impressive. Uh, I don't ever hunt these things. They hunt me. That's a true statement. Uh, it sounds prideful. All I do is pray and work out <laughs> in that order. And everything else takes care of itself. My kids uh, love Jesus. Uh, I, I will tell you tomorrow if I'm still allowed to talk. Uh, no, that's all right. If I'm still allowed to talk tomorrow, I want to tell y'all about a catastrophe. Uh, but tonight I want to share a couple of miracles uh, of, of things that the modern, forget the, the non-hand raiser people, <laughs> forget the religious, the, the hardcore denominations, the, the lifeless generation of twits, yeah. the political cadaver call the religious church. Not counting them. Let's count the people that are on fire. All right? I'm talk that's what I want. And for ones of you that are not on fire that are in here and you are religious, uh, you're going to leave before I'm through. So I don't have to worry about you at all. I'm going to run you off on purpose. You unbelievers are my enemies, and I take it personal. I am a soldier of the gospel, and I do not agree with unbelief. Oops. Just when you found a little niche to hide in, somebody comes along with the fire and smokes you out. Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost, Shakata Baba. I was over there in Arkansas a few weeks ago, because like he said, we've been traveling. I've been everywhere. I, man, 
I haven't been out northwest, but I'm on my way. I'll be there in a few months. Brother Bill and them, I'm going out there again. You know Bill Johnson? Yeah. yeah. Be out there in a few weeks, months, whatever it is. <laughs> okay. But we was in a meeting similar to this. Is this all the items we're going to pray for? It seems like it's, it's naughty and you got it really tidy and in order, but there don't seem like there's enough. Uh, if you want to bring some more stuff up here while I'm talking, please do. Because the miracles, oh my God. It's happening. And I invite you to the miracles of God. To the power of the Holy Ghost. You see me, right? That I'm not afraid. You see that. I know you can. Well, it's true. I'm not. There is times I should be. Like just a few months ago, I was, I was where North Korea meets China and Russia. And they wanted to kill me there. Thank God they weren't successful. Thank God for me. And we'll be going back there in a couple of months. They're desperately wanting us to come back, so... I'm going to go in Jesus' name. I hope I, hopefully I can make it. I've got the courage for it. We'll see how it goes. Holy Ghost. Brother, you don't listen to the news? I don't know if you're my brother or not asking me that dumb question. But I don't listen to Communist News Network. I disagree with them. They make me mad. <laughs> because what I'm seeing out there, the horror and the drama is there. It is there. But what I'm seeing is the hand of the gospel helping those people. And you don't need more fear. i got to figure out how not to make you more afraid, but how to make you less afraid and more filled with the courage of the gospel. That's my dilemma. Because somehow you believe those losers. But you just can't seem to believe the Bible. I, I don't get that. So we was in Arkansas. And we was doing this. Now it looks a little better. A little bit. I'm a little bit, a little bit better. And... Um, there was a guy, y'all have learned how to put up with these bronchial problems, uh, bronchial asthma, and uh, y'all live with those things, the arthritis, the asthmas, the eye problems, the ear problems, and you, you learn how to fit Indianapolis or Fort Wayne or Chicago into your schedule. So you can keep giving your money away to people who need your money for their Lamborghini payment. I'm not. You look at me. I'm not doing that. Jesus is king. So this is what we're going to do. This fella comes up. Now this fella, because I was in one of the. It's, as far as I know, it's the number one uh, meth cooking county in the United States. It's famous for methamphetamines. And so that's why I was there, because I disagree with methamphetamines. Now, ready for this? And you users in here are losers. I disagree with you. Put them cowards out of business by cleaning yourself up. Whatever it takes, tie yourself to a post. I, stop it. 
Jesus' name. And so uh, I'm in there, right? And the place is packed. I mean, there's these good old boys. Some, there wasn't, I don't think there was a car in the parking lot. I was grateful I was driving a truck. I'm grateful I had a beard. <laughs> uh, they come rolling up in there. One of them sold up looking at me. So I decided to look back at them. Bring it. I don't need a crutch. I got the Holy Ghost. I, I don't need. I'm not a coward. I'm going to face this thing and beat it full of the Holy Ghost. There you go. There's my address against drugs. <laughs> and so they, they, uh, this fellow walks up, and I thought he was a crackhead. I, I really, I thought he was going to hit me or something. He was ragged looking. And he had this little thing. Uh, I don't remember the name. Uh, Ms. Hogan, what do you call that thing? Inhaler. See, I don't know y'all's. See, most of you in here are probably legal drug addicts. <laughs> but some of you are sneaking in here and acting like legal drug. The rest of us are drug users that we get because of some other guy's signature. I'm not. She's not. So, there's two clean people in here. So, <laughs> that's a start. <laughs> so, he brought that thing, that squirter deal, and he set it down. And when he set it down on the thing, he looked at me. I thought, this is it. He's coming. So, I braced for impact. <laughs> I thought he was coming. It would have been a lot better story if he would have. <laughs> but he didn't. And he attacked, not me, but he made the decision before I preached to try to have faith to be healed. I like that. Because he knew I would try my best to help him because that's what I do. I'm aggressive. I'm, I'll look you right in the face and I'll bring it. But when it comes to prayer time, I lose all that aggression and I get compassionate. And we raise the faith level in people hugging, kissing, and so forth and so on. And so... You know, this guy's there and he's watching. He's, you can tell he's non-churched. I can. I do this every day. Do you understand? You do something every day, a long enough time, you start learning how to do it. You start understanding your environment better. I'm an eighth generation and I've been doing this for 43 years. And for the last several years, I've been doing it every day for a long time straight in a row. And I change tribes and nations and tongues and food. And, and so it gives you even more experience when you do that. It helps you. It makes you good like I am right now. I'm good at this job right here. And it's on purpose. My wife and I have decided to do this. And it's on behalf of the gospel. We was listening to a song at the Pandora thing, and it was running a while ago. And, uh, and it came on there, you know, about the gospel and giving yourself over wholly to the gospel. And I started bawling. I told her, that's what I do. And she just walked over right in the room, give me a kiss. She said, and you'll continue to do so. I said, but I'm tired. She said, doesn't matter what you are. Hush, let's go. Amen. That's a true statement. She's right. And so I'm not going to be fussy with her. Mm. 
much. Yeah, right here. And so, I want to tell you this because this correlates with some other miracles that I may or may not tell you. But it was exactly the same scenario. It was a very difficult situation because the area is depressed financially. Is that the right word, depressed? Or suppressed? Which one is it? It's where everybody's hacked off. Because <laughs> somebody, some government, I don't know which one, United States probably, since that's where we're standing, took all the jobs because it shut down the coal mines. So y'all's corn could have the precedence. I don't care. I really don't. What I care about is helping those people. Because see, when, when, you're, when you have asthma as bad as he had it, five times a day he quits breathing. Average of three times a week he's in the hospital and they're pumping oxygen in him to keep him alive. That man is in a bind. I thought it was the other kind of drugs, and it was the lack of oxygen why he was so rough looking. He don't have air like us. We don't think about it. That's all he thinks about is the next breath. And he look, he's just looking at me, and I thought, well, he's coming. He didn't. He went and sat down, and, and, he, and he sat right on the front, and he's just, he's, he, it, he never took his eyes off of me. And the whole time I was talking, I was watching him the whole time. I'm so pleased about your God. Now, it, it was, this was a mechanical device filled with some sort of medicine that he brought and put in the pile up here. And then whenever he came, when it came to prayer time, he went and got his thing. And he come up there, he said, have I done everything I'm supposed to with this? I said, you did good. I said, is that all wrong with you is asthma? He said, there's some other associated ideas from the devil. They're trying to kill me. I said, I'm going on record. He said, I knew you would. I said, well, I go on record that Jesus is king. And then I disagree with a demon spirit trying to kill you. He said, what do I do? I said, well, until God heals you, keep sucking that stuff. Y'all, I didn't get far down the trail, probably four or five days, and I got an email. He must have told me a hundred times in that email, thank you. Because he, he, he hit that thing one it was the third day, hit that thing, and it seized him up. They rushed him to the hospital. They kept him overnight. And the problem was the medicine re was reacting negatively to his new lungs. <laughs> Brand new. Completely healed. So here's my question to you. That fella, his family, what's their opinion of the gospel right now, this second, right now? He is a new man. <laughs> That's pretty awesome. Isn't it pretty awesome? Holy Ghost. Asthma. Say it. Asthma. Out. Out. In the name of Jesus. Name of Any Jesus. bronchial problems. Any, Any lung-related issues. Lung Out. Out. In the name of Jesus.
few weeks ago, before we started this trip, I was praying and fasting. That's a new thing God, I don't know, just showed up in my Bible the other day. <laughs> and I thought, Miss Hogan, who put that in there? Well, if it's in there, we should do it. So we was praying and fasting like we've been doing for 40 something years. Now I'm sorry, what I'm fixing to say to you, I apologize up front. All of this stuff is not even supposed to happen. The guy is supposed to die with asthma and the church is supposed to say, that's the will of God, family, praise the Lord. We tried, but we failed. Praise the Lord. I disagree. I've had enough. I'm not doing it. I'm not doing it anymore. I'm just not. I, I'm not against you. I'm just not going to do it. I'm going to worship the king. His name is Jesus. And I'm going to be aggressive about it. And I'm going to be forthcoming about it. And I'm going to impress you with how rude I can be against religion. It's just not right. And so why should I tolerate it? <laughs> so. This is not my fault, and I apologize to everybody that's intelligent in here. <laughs> Whoever that is, or, I'm so sorry to you. Because <laughs> I do expect you to believe the gospel. And I know that reeks in your intelligent world. Your world of logic and reason just absolutely can't tolerate humans like me. And we don't give a flying flip. And that was very tactful. I bless you. I'm not here to curse you. I'm not. Your land is so fruitful. Oh, Y'all are so blessed. Ah, but I need you to turn all that energy to heaven. All of it. He don't want your stuff. He wants you. But to get you, you have to turn all your junk toward him. And then he'll give it all back to you with a different heart. That's true. And look here. We was praying, me and this woman. Now I'm one of these accelerated people. I believe in no tolerance for the enemy. I believe in bowing to the Holy Ghost. I believe that Jesus is king. I am a son and a favorite son. So I'm fasting. So I look it up in there about Moses and Elijah and these people that I'm trying to be like. Jesus, Paul, Peter, these people that actually did the gospel in their generation. What was their lifestyle like? What? How did they pray? You don't know. You don't read your Bible. You think you're okay by saying, unscrew the light bulbs. <laughs> Jesus. Now, that was funny. I'm going to get that. Give it to my boys. They'll like that. I'm so sorry. I'm not stalling. I'm trying to figure out how to manage this the most aggressive way. Because <laughs> I'm not afraid. But I can't use my joy and freedom as a cloak of maliciousness against you. So I have to be cautious with that also. It's not as easy as it seems to be awesome. He 
If you really believe that Jesus is king and that you are forgiven and that you are a son of God, you are awesome. And this planet needs you, but they don't need some broken down religious twin. There's enough of those. Listen, I, I was just over where, where three main religions come together, the, the, the Buddhists, the Hindus, and the, and the Muslims, and they're all at war with each other. Look, I met some of the most capable, amazing people. They fast way more than any Christian I've ever met. Their loyalty, their, their obedience, their sacrifice is bizarre. But they're wrong. So how am I going to go up and approach those people? How, what do I do to convince people of loyalty, of, of that they're perfect? They pray hours on hours a day. They fast on end, endless. They mutter. That's all they do is do their little funny bead things. And you don't even think about God, but you think you're great. Something's up. Something's not right. They're not right, and neither is the modern church. We need something they've got, and they need something we've got. And I've traipsed around this planet and figured a couple of things out. You ought to see it when they come to, like I was in, uh, one of my favorite things that happened this year, I was in uh, the Czech Republic. You don't ever hear about that nation. It's right beside Germany the next one over from Germany to the east and I'm in a quite large environment there's thousands of these people and and they're freaked out Uh, Greek Orthodox uh, people Catholics and they're all fighting each other over a few trivial differences of some robe or something and uh you know, and I don't care. I don't wear robes. I don't care which robe they put on. They come rolling up on me with their funny beards and you know, robes, and I go, woohoo, let's go. Look odd to me in the first place. So let's go. Now, I want you to hear what happened, and then we'll get back to the fasting and prayer thing. Is that okay? Because fasting and prayer doesn't do that. Fasting and prayer brings you in submission to the Holy Ghost, and he does it. Hallelujah. People confront me, con- not, not every day, but at least a couple times a week, and, uh, you know, chewing me out about all this prayer and fasting, it don't work, we did it, it didn't work. Well, I did it, and it does work. Uh, one of us is wrong. <laughs> me? That ain't gonna happen. So I'm in this place, and they, they, had, they had bought a 1,000 chairs or an auditorium with 1,000 seats, right? They had rented it for a couple of days. They, they were so awful in their calculation. There was thousands of people came. That place was so full. I, I mean, I had so many bodyguards and machine guns, and it was scary. It was so awesome. I mean, it's so awesome when you got these. I mean, these guys are bulls. I mean, they're, they're, they're get up, just get up. <laughs> I mean, it was, <laughs> it was awesome. <laughs> and this guy comes up to me, and he's, uh, he's, he's, uh, he's a dean of this university that we got the building on the property, right? And he says to me, I'm really glad to meet you. He's talking to me, and his English is awesome, better than mine. And I go, that's great. Who are you now? Oh, I'm going to interpret for you. I said, okay. And uh, what's your job description? He said, oh, I'm the dean here at this university. I said, the whole place? This is big. 
He says, yes. And you want to interpret for me? He said, oh, yes. I want to get close to you, and this is the best way. I said, no, that's, that's quite a privilege for me to be around such a valuable, intelligent fella. And we're sitting up there talking. This guy speaks like 10 languages. And it was good for, to have him as an interpreter because anybody that came up, he could just talk to them. And so, you know, we're going, you know, and then all of a sudden, here comes these imams. Do you know what that is? That is the Muslim preacher people. They guide the Muslim people uh, with, the, with the Quran and that. Like I preach out of the Bible, they preach out of the Quran. You see me using these words and I'm not getting shot, right? You see that, right? Have you noticed that? It's going to get more bright than that, I promise you. And I'm watching them file in, and they, they're not dressed like any of the Greek Orthodox, the Catholics, or the Hindus, or the Buddhists. And they come filing in. Now, look here. You understand how many religions we got? We're in a pile, all of us, and there's thousands. And we ain't got but, what is there, 10 guys with, what, 200 rounds apiece? You don't have enough bullets. You can turn them guns on, but you ain't going to get everybody. They're going to get us if they want us. And they will get you because they're what y'all call fanatics or radicals. But so am I. Right. The difference is I don't kill you. I give you life. The difference is I'm right and you're wrong. That makes me more valuable. <laughs> Hello? See, you got it backwards. They've made you afraid. Stop it. Light up. Well, Brother Hogan, how did they get you into this? I don't know how it happened. If I had I known it, I might not have went. I may not have gone. Boy, it was, I'm looking at all these different religions, and they're all at war with each other. No, this is literal. And I'm part of Christianity. Christianity is at war with all of them. Yeah. Truth. Say, yeah, that's right. Say it. Yeah. And so I'm sitting there, right? And, uh, and this guy, he leans over to me. He says, those imams, and there's 14 of them. That's a lot. I said, why are they here? He said, I invited them. <laughs> he said, I speak Arabic. And I, I'm teaching those people English. I said, and why did you invite them? He said, they're refugees. I said, I understand that. In everything I know about it, you should have invited them. And he just looked at me and he said, everybody in here is against you. I said, so what's 14 more? <laughs> see, see how in this environment, you feel safe. You feel like you understand this environment. And you think you'll get out of here safely. You, don't, you ain't even thought about any negative event in here. You just, you, you, you just thought about whatever you think about. Corn. <laughs> Thank y'all. I like corn flakes. <laughs> or wheat or soybeans, all of that. I, en I enjoy all of it. Thank you. Cows especially. They're yummy. Okay. So. I hadn't even said a verse yet. I know y'all probably mad at me about that. Maybe we'll get to it. So how much time do we have? There's only one more story besides this one, or maybe two. 
But I do want to. I do want to include the angels. And okay, so because I really want to get you, I want your time to be valuable. Okay, I want you to be well used of your time. So my job is to try to figure out how to get into you where you'll be bettered by what we're doing. Because all of, I was telling my wife, all three of those different types of music, I know all of those people, Hillsong, Bethel, and the Ramp people, I know all of them. And, and I, that's, that is really good music you were listening to. I know those kids. Well, to me, they're kids. And, and this is a good environment. It's conducive for miracles. Hello? So I need you to let it happen. Just say, okay, I'm going to do that. Say it. I'm going to do that. All right. So I'm standing up in front of these thousands of people. This, listen, I apologize to y'all. This is not my fault. I'm just up there being me, trying to figure out how not to start another war. Because it's bubbling. It's going to happen. And I'm probably going to hit the right chords because I'm not afraid. I'm going to talk about sensitive subjects. And this, uh, this fellow says, I need you to get them. He said, I've heard about you. And I've heard that you're not afraid. I said, I'm not afraid, but they might kill us both. He said, they won't kill us both. The angel of the Lord is with you. I said, you're right about that, but what about you? <laughs> I need a halls, please. And uh, he said, if I'm with you, I'll be fine. I said, okay, fine, whatever. I don't know you, I just met you, but we'll see if the angel will protect you. <laughs> so I start talking. Now, it's noisy. I mean, it's uncomfortable. I don't like the spirit that I'm in. It's not like this, where you got awesomeness and everybody's more or less expectant. It, there, there's controversy. There's, there's opposition, and it's witchcraft, and it's heavy. But, it, but that kind of stuff makes me sleep really good at night. When I get in the environment that I, it's go, I'm going to die, and I decide to step into it instead of away from it, I feel accomplished. And when I get through it, and the angel of the Lord delivers me, and I finally, <sighs> I sleep quite well. Gracias, hermana. And uh, so I'm, you know, going at it. Bam. I'm backing up. I mean, I'm on this religious thing. I'm, God hates religion. I'm going at it serious. Haven't named one yet. But I've called out of three or four of them. Bead-toting, robe-wearing, <laughs> devils. But I didn't name it. And all of a sudden, this is not my fault. <laughs> right here to my right, my, my, my bouncers, that's not what they're called, hang on. Bodyguards are, are fighting somebody. And now they got guns on them. So I'm thinking, it must not be threatening or they had pulled them guns around, surely. Turns out it was a woman. I saw a leg go through the thing. And I'm talking, I'm trying to watch the battle at the, and try, trying not to get killed with witchcraft. I mean, it's on over here. Do you understand? Finally, this woman, I don't know how she got past those guards. But she's, got, she's dragging this kid with her. And the kid is twisted and mangled. And she's got him in tow. And she looks at me, because she's inside the bodyguards now. They're, so there's nothing but the angel of the Lord now. 
And she climbs up on that platform. I couldn't believe they let her do that. And she pulls that kid. I don't know how she did that. But this kid is big. And he's, 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 he's sick. Seriously sick. And she rolls up on me, right? This is a historical event. You hear me? And she laid that boy down on my boots, and she got down on her knees, grabbed my pants leg, and looked up. Tears are flowing, right? I might not be the brightest light bulb in this room, but I know what she wants. But you see, Jesus, if you look in your Bible, every time he got around somebody that was obvious, he asked them every time, what do you want? See, you being presumptuous and presumptive and out of order is not my fault, but I'm not going to do that. My responsibility is to look at that woman right in the face and let her speak her faith. And if she don't have any, I can help her anyway. <laughs> Should have seen it. I wish you could have seen it when it happened. It's just, it's massive. It's freaky. It scares the dead gummit out of you. Because I'm in this environment, right? It's horrible. The hate. But that mama. See, she changed the whole thing. She didn't care about me and my blue jeans. She didn't care about me in any manner. She wanted that baby healed. And see, that's what you need. Isn't it? Somebody that's aggressive enough to push through the environment to get to the spot where faith resides. Hallelujah. You look in your Bible at the dozens of people that did that and the results of those people. Right. And so I'm sitting there, right? Because I can't understand her because I don't speak Czech. And I look over at my interpreter. He's crying so much he can't, he can't, he can't interpret for me. I know what she wants, so I, but I asked her anyway, what's up? Why are you doing that? Why are you put that snotty kid on my boot? You know he's going to drool on my britches leg. I'm going to have to wash that out because Miss Hogan's not here. I'll have to do it myself. <laughs> Boy, I like this. You hear me? You hear me? I don't give a flying flip what you think. That was my britches leg getting drooled on. <laughs> and I'm supposed to be politically correct and walk on eggshells, you know, be logical and within reason, Brother Hogan. Please. No. <laughs> give me a hammer for each hand. So I can break all the eggs. I don't like that. You're wrong about that. You're not supposed to be rude. But letting the world tell you how to live the gospel is wrong. And I need to release you from that. Say I'm released. Say it. In the name of Jesus. And then the next thing that happened was, uh, I touched her. I didn't ever touch the drooling little boy, but I did touch the mom because she was bent. That woman was in a bind. She needed help. This, this boy doesn't got big now, and it's not easy anymore, you know. And no money, and And I, I'm telling you, I saw this just like everybody else did, right in front of our eyes. 
you start hearing bones popping. And, and, you know, I'm, I'm saying, whoa. I'm backing up. And this little kid, it's like some horror movie, you see, Steven Spielberg thing or something, like one of those uh, Wolfman things. But it's the other way, he's coming back. Man. And right in front of the whole stack of people, this little boy stood up and looked at his mama. Yeah. And see, in your world, you want me to be understanding. But because of the way I walk my life and fast and pray and seek the Lord and I'm aggressive about believing the gospel, do you understand what happened to the world of those people in the Czech Republic? Yeah. It's changed forever. Yeah. But that's not all because the eyes of these religious people sitting right on the front, you, there was no more the scowls are wiped away. Yeah. These people, the, the, the look on their faces, now that's worth a few million. And so, and this little boy, and I, I just said, now this is what we're trying to do. And, and all of a sudden, this woman up in the third balcony up there screamed at me loud. That's enough! We want you to heal the rest of the sick! <laughs> My response was, shut up and sit down. <laughs> Whoa. I told her. You listen to me. I do this every day of my life. I'm not interested in your enthusiasm or emotions. You didn't see me doing that. You didn't see me pulling through those guards. You didn't see me do that. I'm not doing it. I'm not going to do what you say. You sit down and hush. If you can do a better job than me, and this goes for you too, bring it. If you can't, give me a minute, will you? Because this Holy Ghost we're serving is awesome. And he don't want to leave anybody out. That's a true statement. And y'all, I'm telling you, I sat right there and looked at those people. Talked to them a few more minutes. And then that, that interpreter guy says to me, get those Muslims. I said, well, if I have to. <laughs> so I look back there at that leader. They're easy to pick out, these guys. I mean, just like we are. I mean, you think you can hide amongst them. You can't hide amongst them. Hey, dude, you got, you're the sore thumb. Uh, it's not going to happen. So, but in our world, you can pick them out as well. So. I looked back there at that guy, he's about eight rows back. I just pointed at him and I said, excuse me, you saw what my God can do, and I know your God, he can't do that. So, don't you want to get born again? You know what he said to me? I do. And... He marched up there and got born again, him and all 14 of them. Wow. Okay. This is starting to add up. You get this cerebral palsy boy healed, and now you got these Muslims healed. This is starting to work out. Taking them all one at a time and whooping the fire out of them. So now let's get back to the fasting and prayer. Can we do that? Because it's six minutes to nine on that clock. Let me see. Yep, it's right. According to my theology. <laughs> Turn.
turn in your Bibles, if you have one, or if you, have, if you like me and give up that tree killing. That's so much fun to say that kind of stuff. Really, it's got to do with this thing weighs less than a pound. In my Thompson chain weighs five pounds. This has 38 Bibles. That's all I put in there. In it, and if I carry 38 Thompson chains, I won't even get my suitcase over to. <laughs> but I'm not like you. I don't believe in that. I believe in Jesus. Amen. Now I can bring, because of this, I can bring an extra pair of blue jeans. Think about it. <laughs> Y'all doesn't see how mad them people get on them airlines. They in the news every other week. So let's go to this verse here, prophets. What verse is that? No. I've changed. But if you were the prophet, you'd have known that. The reason I changed is because I was sitting there the other night. It was on like the eighth day. I, I'm, I, I don't even know if I should even tell you. I'm a total fast guy. Don't even get this. Just sit in the floor and starve. That's what fasting is. Starving. And I'm on probably the eighth day or ninth day and I listen to the Bible 24 hours a day. I don't, I don't, inter, I, there's no internet, no smartphones. I have these things hanging off of me everywhere. And they're always with me. And you'll find out if, if I get to talk tomorrow, you'll find out why they stay on me. Because this is a T-Mobile. And right now T-Mobile has the best plan. For $44 a month. I get 160 nations free data. True statement. So for y'all that's with Verizon, no, that, was, that was a joke. I don't care if you waste your money. <laughs> TNT, so sorry. It's fun though. But your company can't do what mine can. <laughs> and mine for four dollars. That's less than fifty. And they don't throttle me at twenty-two gigabytes. Say what? That's for y'all that no, the rest of y'all are, are speaking some of the language. But while I was sitting, I don't do this when I'm, I stay focused. I'm a really disciplined human. And it's, it pays off for everybody that will listen. I don't care if you agree with everything, I care that you listen. Because it gives the Holy Ghost right to manage you better. Okay, and so I'm, I'm there, you know, and we're, my wife and I are going, this thing's going, and I told her, dude, this thing, I'm hungry. I, I want a double, double Whopper. Golly, with extra cheese. Make it an extra large thing of French fries with the biggest Coke they got. And tell them to add sugar to that. Well, I'm not eating something. You can see that. And, you know, I'm just, I'm, uh, and so we get, we go to bed. I mean, I, I shut it down for the night. It's like late. It's probably 11 or 12 or something. And, and I, I go to sleep. I'm an earplug guy. I'm one of these alert people. And it's hard to go to sleep. And when I, and I wish, I'm sorry to you about what's going to happen. I, I wish I was spiritual. But I'm a human. And it just amazes me when it comes up. Man, I'm on like the eighth day, total fast. This is going good. I got strength. I'm okay. I didn't die, what I'm saying. 
And I'm in there asleep. In a, she, she gets me these real famous 35 decibel earplug things. And I mean, it shuts her out, buddy. I can sleep some. All of a sudden, I hear a noise through the earplugs. Now, look. I'm sorry. I apologize for my humanity. I'm sorry to you. But it really helps things because I'm a human, really. That means all of us can do it because we're all human. And I'm sitting there, right? And I hear this noise. I'm in the bed. That's not where you want a noise. Men, you know that. Say, I know that. Don't come in my house at night and say it. I know what I'm going to get if I do. (laughs) Look, I heard a noise through my earplugs. Dude, first thing, pull them things out. And I wish, I'm sorry. I wish I could say to you, I fell on my face and said, God, whatever it is, let the angels take care of it. But before I know it, I got that stainless seven-inch barrel 44 in my hand. (laughs) And I'm going down the hall. All the lights are on and it's noisy. I'm thinking, home invasion. I'm going to get them all. I wish I could be real spiritual like you. (laughs) And not be so human. And then I got down there and I thought, I need some backup. So I backed up back in that thing and I tapped that bed, bam, bam, woman, get your gun. (laughs) I mean, you got to see these old people walking down through there with a gun in their own house. And we all fasted and we both be spiritual and everything. So now you see why I need to pray and fast because I'm a human. And I need to get over that. Say it. Me too. too. Now you told the truth. (laughs) And we get in there, right? And I look around. Everything's locked. Okay. Now, you would prefer a home invasion than a God invasion. Uh, Let me say that again. Say, I know you. You don't want God in your life. You work on keeping him out. What? If I wasn't right about what I just said, there would be more power of God with you. If you were as aggressive as you want me to believe at seeking God, God would be flowing with you. He loves us. He doesn't resist us. He don't hate us. Isaiah chapter 12 verse 1 says, God is not angry with me anymore. You hear me? If you were as godly as you want me to believe, there would be more dead reasons around. So I need you to listen to me. We are going to deal with this, with this flesh. That's how it's going to happen. Because I went in there, fully believe in home invasion, and because all the lights are on, my, my Bose speakers, my kids bought me, my Walkman, not Walkman, they're not Walkmans anymore, what's iPod, is playing through the Bose, and you can't, that don't just come on by itself. It is not hooked to the internet, so I know you didn't hack me. So I'm thinking, what is going on? I'm not confused, but I don't understand. I don't get it. I'm thick up here. Just like you say, yeah, you're right about that. Say it. Say yeah. Say something else. It's the truth here. Look, we got to change. Being human is who we are, but being like God is what we're about. We've got to be like him. What, what we're doing is not working, so we need to do something else. You may be comfortable, but nobody around you is comfortable. Say it, you're probably right. No, I am right. 
So, I mean, I went and looked, then I turned everything off, and I'm, I'm sitting there, I'm trying to figure out how this happened. See, I, I, here I am fasting, doing a total fast. I'm asking God for the Holy Ghost, and I still can't get it that God invaded my house and it wasn't to do with no bad guys. Y'all, I went in there. And I put, I'm, I'm, I'm not confused, but I'm thinking about it. What in the world? Okay, let's just make believe that God loves us and he tried to get a hold of me. Let's just pretend like this fasting's working. What, what, did, what, am I, what does he want? And then I fell asleep. It was three in the morning. I wake up and I go in there five steps to get my stuff turned on like it was turned on. Meaning, physically, physically somebody touched my buttons and turned them on. And then somebody looked up the Bible verse that was playing. Okay, so I thought, okay, God, let's just say you love me like your Bible say. And that I, this fasting is working. And, and you, now that I've aggressively attacked heaven, now you're aggressively attacking me and trying to get to me and speak to me, Right? So I went to that Bible verse that was playing and I backed it up a couple of chapters because I can speak almost word for word the whole of Psalms and Proverbs in Spanish to you by memory. I can quote almost the whole New Testament as well. And so I knew where it was at when it was talking. I knew what it was saying because it was in Spanish. And so I went back to it and I sat down. There's no interruptions whatsoever. Ms. Hogan is sitting over there just like she is now, quiet. And we're listening to this thing, verse 8, chapter 18, 19, 20, 21, and 22 of Psalms. And I listen to it. And I know all of those verses. I can quote them to you. All right. Okay. We do it again. I do it again. I do it again. And on the fifth time, I got it. So turn to Psalms 19, will you? And let me tell you what God wants you to know. The angel of the Lord came and turned that on for me. And even though it was done by miracle, I had to sit there for a few hours to get myself into the... I don't know if it's a level or the position to hear or receive. I, I, you, you call it. Y'all are the religious twits. I, I don't know what they call it. I just know that God went out of his way to get me there, and then it took me hours to figure it out. But I got it. And you see me, how confident I am. I'm going to say something to you that works, Betty. You hear me? What I'm fixing to tell you works. Sure does. Psalms 19. You there? Verse 1. Read me the first phrase. I don't care what version. What do the heavens do? What do the heavens do? So tell me what the heavens do. Would you please help me with this? What in the cat hair do the heavens do? Well, speak to them. Heavens, declare for me the glory of God. See, I want to see it. Yeah, see these angelic visits? We're getting lots of them now. Uh, and I could really make you mad at me because of them. There's a lots of them. There's so many people that God is waking up around the planet and giving them my name. 
where I work, how I work, what we're doing, and they're contacting me because the angels are telling them, get David in here. This is what we're going to do. And this is happening on all the continents. All right. This is good. All right. But it's scary. It's unusual. It's perhaps one of the greatest things I've ever done. But how do you do it? You don't know anybody that's done it. Writing music and doing all these things are awesome. But these angelic visitations and these godly powers that are trying to get to us. And we're resisting it the whole way. Pull a 44 on God. What's up with that? That's ridiculous. (laughs) You know, now that we're on this side of that, it's, it's... feels bad that I did that. I wish, I wish I'd have known to not do that. I wish I couldn't have been a human at that moment. I wish I could have been like he is. Oh, you're waking me up. Praise the Lord. Let's have a conversation. Praise God. But being a human is just that gummit tiring. <laughs> Say it. Yes, it is. Say it. Because you want to do better. But somehow people don't let you. Hell don't let you. God don't let you. But then when he breaks in on you, he invades your home, you pull a gun on him. You're right. That's a true statement. So we got to fix that, okay? I'm so glad it happened to me because I'll talk about it. I won't hide it. Your God loves you. You understand, he went out of his way to try to get this verse to you. But it's not this verse, it's five chapters, but I only have limited time with you. So we'll do probably, we won't make it past this first verse. It ain't going to happen. So what do the heavens do? So tell me again, what do the heavens do? What do the heavens do? Heaven, declare for me the glory. I want it. This is what the heavens do, is declare the glory. Now, what we've got to do is recognize what the heavens do in press it. Go for it. Push on it. Stir them up. Whoever they are, whatever they look like. I don't know. I'll probably draw a gun on them. But it, they're not impressed. They kept doing their doing. When I, I mean, they, it was pro- Can you imagine how this is going to be at playback one of these days? Oh, my God. It's going to be awesome, ain't it? And God's going to do it over and over and over. Can you imagine him up there right now slapping his leg? Look at this, y'all. This human, pull a gun on me. Can you believe it? <laughs> it's a true statement, though. <laughs> Heaven, Heaven. Declare, declare the glory. glory. Heaven, Heaven. Declare, declare the glory. glory. There's another phrase in that first verse, in the Amplified. What version? Oh, they got it up there. So who is it back there? Put that up there. Oh, you get a kiss. He wouldn't have, but you do. (laughs) But I would have hugged him. Holy. So what does the firmament do? What does that mean? The firmament. What is that? I looked it up. It's the space between outer space and earth. Oh, that's where I live. It's not very far off of earth, but I I live there. I live in the firmament. Firmament? Say it. Show me. me. Proclaim for me. The handiwork of God. God. Heaven, Heaven. show me the glory. glory. 
firmament. Declare. Proclaim. The handiwork of the Lord. See, everybody wants to know how we're getting all these miracles. It's that verse right there. Somehow we've figured out how to draw on this. And God's got it in place, waiting on the sons of God that seek him. That's me. Holy. <laughs> Holy Ghost. So I'm trying to figure out which one of these miracles to get to you with. I think I want to do the Sophie one. Is that all right, Miss Hogan? What do you say? Is that okay? Is that too long or is that okay? You okay with that? Go see, you don't know who Sophie is. My newest granddaughter was born last week. Yeah. Seven, number seven. And her name is Sophie. But I met a different Sophie than my grandbaby that I haven't seen that I'm not going to get to. She'll probably be walking time I see her. Uh, maybe not. Maybe crawling. Hopefully. Because see, in your world, it's about you and yours. In my world, it's about God and his. So he takes care of me in my world. Because I submit to him and his. And that way I can call on the heavens and the glory comes. I can talk to the firmament and it will proclaim and show for me the handiwork of the Lord. Because you know, every one of you in here, you may not know God like I know God, but you know what handiwork is. And for all of us, it'll be a little bit different, but there's something about God that impresses you. And if you believe in him, there's something about him that you would like to see. <laughs> and in my case, it's dead raises. I was consumed with that. Now that I've found that to be an easy thing for God, I'm on to other things. Like, what would it be like to get a whole nation saved? I don't know. That would be pretty nice. There has been such a thing. Remember when they marched out of Egypt, the whole stack of them believed in God. Remember? Yeah. Remember how many of you believe there was, whether, whether it was 500,000 or 6 million. It doesn't matter to me. I don't care. Like I told you before, I don't care about that stuff. What kind of tassels you have on your robe, I give a fly. I don't care. Numbers, I don't care about that. I care about who's guiding us. What are the heavens doing for us? Their job is to declare the glory of God. Turn it on! So how do you get those knobs turned? That's what I do. <laughs> he lets me talk to the heavens and the glory comes. He lets me speak to the firmament. And the handiwork is shown and proclaimed. So, the reason you need to stay in focus and not be led astray by trivial things like success or failure or death or dying or diseases or loss or consumption of goods, those are distractions. That's not true reality. God is true reality. The heavens declaring the glory, that's reality. The firmament proclaiming and showing the gospel, that's reality. See, I've seen, now I've got so much experience now, and I've seen so many things of goodness. I've been told I'm, I'm get, starting to get a little complicated because I, I just can see it. I can see it. I can see it. It's easy. It's not hard. <laughs> God is manipulating you 
You're going to see one of these days, maybe hundreds of thousands of times he tried to get to you, but you wouldn't draw your gun and go check it out. I did. <laughs> God loves you. Each individual in this room is primary to God. There, there's no one ahead of you in his opinion. You are the leader of the pack to him. You're his favorite son or daughter of Zion. You, you are it to him. You are the favorite to him. Because his primary favorite is sitting right beside him. Making intercession for you. On your behalf. That, this is all scriptural. Everything I'm saying to you. This is why you listen to your Bible all day long so you can know what it says. <laughs> and, 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 but I'm, I'm this guy that draws guns when God comes, right? And so I'm not, I am focused. I'm, I like what I do and, and, and I'm good at it. But I just stick up here sometimes. And, and, and you get these invitations. I got invited to go to, to Europe, and I went. And, man, we were in like 11 of the, of the nations in Europe and just preaching everywhere, da, 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 all over the place. Da, boom, 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 boom. And I come to this place called Bavaria. If you ever get a chance, go. Best food. Oh, my God. That is some good food over there, boy. And uh, boy, I like it. And so, you know, we're in there and it's beautiful, the beauty. I got cornfields like you do. I mean, golly, it's beautiful. There's a reason they fight over that land every few months. It's amazing. And so I'm in there, and it's a few hundred of us. It's not a whole bunch. It's a very staunch religious place, and it's, it needs the gospel. That's why I'm there, to smile at them and to blow their demons away and kill all their sacred cows. And, and uh, um, you know, I'm there, and, and now I'm in this room, right? And it's a rented hall like this one, and it's full like this one is, and it's people from everywhere all over Europe, and it's a good environment, but it's also conducive for problems because of the mixture of religions. But me, I like it. I like to step up because all these religious uh, atrocities that are around there's only one way to prove them wrong and that's mercy yeah. the love of God with active mercy has no equal there is nothing can stop the fire of God when mercy's involved do you understand me nothing right. I don't care who you are bring it and I'm, this is so awesome Listen, y'all, I'm so pleased. Because in drives one of these cars. Y'all have gotten real elaborate with your wheelchairs. They're just cars now. <laughs> they're big and they're intrusive and they're all of that. And this is where I'm supposed to walk on eggshells and be politically correct, but I happen to not like it. Excuse me? Didn't think so. So, because you can't do what I can do. This is going to bless you. You're fixing to be blessed. And, uh, uh, you know, I notice everything. I act like I'm just, you know, not there, like I'm looking for my 44 or something. But I see everything. Whew. That's how you stay alive where I live, is you notice the different little turned leaves and things. And so, you know, I noticed that when a car rolls in, it's pretty easy to see. So I roll up on that car, and I'm, I'm circling it, you know, I'm looking at it. And I don't see an owner. Uh, you know, they left. I, they, they got in there and got the car in there. I was busy worshiping. And then next thing you know, I turn around, whoa, there's a 
car over there. I said, are you serious? I know y'all are, you know, you, y'all are forward thinkers, you Europeans are progressive, but that's a little far. So I roll up on the car, and I'm wondering what's in it, because I'm so curious. But see, God makes me that way. I had no, you, you don't never know when you're fixing to hit destiny. See, I am filled with purpose. I'm driven. I, I am a purpose-filled, driven human. I mean, I like what I do. I like going against forces that are wrong, and I like presenting proper love and mercy forces of grace. And uh, I roll over there, and there's this little black girl in there. Now, you don't understand. I'm in Bavaria. There are no black people. So I look in there, and this tiny thing, it's this big, and it, and it looks like a corpse. It looks like uh, something that's been dead a while. The, the hand is it's so tiny and so, you can see skeleton, and it, it looks like it's dead, but I saw it move. But it's bug-eyed, and its skin is taunt, and it's, it ain't right. And, and I'm just, oh, God, what is that? And I look around for the parents, and there are no black people. This, so me, I'm pulling Velcro, and I pull this thing out. It's tiny. I had no idea it was little Sophie and that God had worked miracles to get her to me. See, you sitting there believing that you've been isolated and cut out of the herd and that you're useless and you'll just resort to worshiping God by yourself. Praise the Lord. <laughs> oh, I wish it was that good for you. You're not. This little girl, Sophie, <laughs> you know who she is now? She is my dark chocolate, German chocolate granddaughter. Oh. Listen, I pull her out of this thing, right? And I'm looking at her, this bent, abused. I mean, this, this little girl can't move anything. She is mangled and twisted. And I, and I just cannot believe she's alive. I'm not a doctor, but I'm the best grandpa in the world. Yeah. You just know stuff when you're the best grandpa in the world. Yeah. And I'm looking at this tiny creature, and, and I'm wondering, I'm looking up at the people, and everybody's looking at me, everybody. The music stopped. And I just can't believe how horrible. I, I said, whose is it? And here comes walking two white peoples, Germans, Bavarians. And they go, that's our baby. I said, he is not. Move on. Brother David, it's our baby. I said, How'd you get this baby? She's African. I spend a lots of time in Africa. I see this a lot. They said, you're right. Brother David, it's the will of God for you to have your hands on that child. I said, I already know that. Who is she? And how do you have her? And why did you bring her to interrupt my life? Because I'm not pleased with this. I do not like her condition. So now let me tell you Sophie's life. Can I do that? Back up just a little and be a little bit more light about it. Because I'm not. You understand me? I'm a soldier. You can bring it. Because I'm not bluffing. Heaven is with me. 
And it does matter that I got my hands on this little baby. What can you do? Nothing. But he who is with me is greater than he who is in the world. And I happen to believe that. And so I'm holding this creature, this broken thing. It was horrible. She's going to die. I didn't want to let go of her. Because I know if I let go of her, she's going to die. I know that. I know that. If I can hold her, life will go into her. <laughs> I can save her. I got way too much energy. Dude, I got the Holy Ghost. I got the creator of heaven and earth running through me. So heaven, heaven. declare, declare. The, glory. the glory. Firmament, Firmament. Show, and show and proclaim the handiwork. The handiwork. Save Sophie! Because yeah. I'm not having it, you understand? And I have no control over God whatsoever. I mean whatsoever. But I'm having this. How are you going to have it? I don't know. But I'm not okay with watching her die. How about that? I I, what have I seen her? Five minutes? I've had enough. This ain't, this ain't happening. You don't understand. The pain and suffering that's out there outside of your little cul-de-sac. You're just letting it go by. And you're alive. Your heart is beating with the beat of God. Your, your blood is running with the blood of Christ. Your, your life is, you're invincible. You'll never die. And you act like you're already dead. You must be delivered. You must be set free. Sophie needs us. Do you understand me? All of us have a Sophie somewhere. Find her. I did. I found so many of them. But God, see, the, the, the amount of money it takes to to get on these planes and to go to these holes in the walls and the bus rides and the hotels and the time away from the family and the... (coughs) But then you find Sophie. (laughs) And you lift her up to heaven. And you tell heaven, fix her. Please. And then there's nothing you can do because it didn't happen. She's still this mangled little, she looks like a mummy. I mean, she. So I put her back in her car, Velcroed her back in, hooked her back up to her machines. And then I said to the parents, tell me her story. And this was just a couple of months ago when I saw her again. And it's going to trip your wires. You're ready to melt down. Listen to me. Sophie was in a North African nation, which I will not speak. Radicals attacked the village that Sophie lived in, killed everybody but Sophie. Every man, woman, and child was slaughtered, beheaded. It's not your fault. I hope. If I do, hell ain't good enough for you. You need worse. So, 
they left Sophie alive. Now, Sophie is the, is a, the most, I don't, what do you call it? You don't call it retarded anymore. What do you call it? Physically challenged? Is that the say, softer approach? She's the most hurt human at her age. The severity of her, I didn't like that, y'all. And then these cowards came and killed everybody in the village. Which that, that, that doesn't affect Sophie because she's going to die anyway. Say, that's right. Say it. That's why they need us. And so uh, three days, they left her for the hyenas to eat. And uh, three days later or four, the blue hats come. Who are they? Who are the blue hats? So you don't know. United Nations. They get in there finally with their little white trucks and their little guns that's never been fired. And they pick up the dead and they find Sophie. Weird, huh? She didn't die. <laughs> How could you hurt her anymore? I need you to feel this. I need you to feel her. I need you to feel the horrendous acts of humans. I need you to care one way or another. Find your Sophie. And, uh, I did. God did it for me. I, he, he, you're on a course. You're on a collision course. All of you in this room, all of us, we're on a collision course with God to help these people. Yes. It may not be this extreme, but you're on a course. Accept it, enjoy it, and be the best yes. like me. Yeah. I have accepted it. The only difference in us is I've decided you don't know what one looks like till now. now. You listen to this. They scarf her up and helicopter her over to a refugee camp that's got a hospital. That place is a killing field as well. And they do their best, though, to help Sophie. Then orders came. I don't know who punched what buttons, but orders came, and they took Sophie to the to Germany, to a refugee camp. You're right. It is horrendous. But how else is Sophie going to get to me if that camp isn't there? Yeah, I, I, whether I agree or disagree is none of your business. But I got my hands on Sophie. Hello? You ready? That's how Sophie got to Germany. God did that for Sophie. But how did she get to me? Because the refugee camp is on the western side of Germany, and we're on the eastern side. Bavaria's in the, down there by Austria. It's in the southeast corner of Germany. And the angel of the Lord appeared to a mother in Bavaria and says, I've got a baby in this refugee camp for you. How's that? Is that good enough for you? Dad's at work. Calling him dad. He's not dad yet. The angel of the Lord goes to his work, interrupts his work. Tells him identically the same thing he told mom. They're afraid to tell each other. But both of them are trying desperately to figure out how to talk to the other one and figure out how to break the news of the angel of the Lord. When both of them blurted it out, they fell on the floor. The angel of the Lord appeared again and said, I've got it prepared. Go. <laughs> Boing. They get themselves in a little car. They go to get all the paperwork. They got it all lined up, got it in order. This is impossible. You cannot get these kids. This is impossible. For a freeborn person to get their hands on these people. It's impossible. And they go <laughs> to this refugee camp, go in there, lay their paperwork down. And they look at them right in the eyes and said, okay. 
first visit. They go into the best wing of the refugee camp where the, where the normal, healthy children are. And they walk in there and they look around. No, no, this is not what we want. Take us to another one. And they progressively got till they found Sophie. Both of them walked in that room with all of those paraplegics and all these people. And they look over there and there's this twisted, maimed, little tiny creature with tubes running out of it everywhere. There she is. And her name is Sophie. Put it on the paper. <laughs> Do you understand how God does things for us? Is so far beyond and bizarre our thinking. Psalms 19, verse 1, first phrase. Read it to me. Heaven, Heaven. Declare, declare the glory. glory. I, must I must see it. And the amount of tragedy that went on and the perplexities and the complexities of the situation on how to get it all to work out, God did it all. This is impressive. And how to get me from Mexico to Bavaria, that's really impressive. How to get Sophie from a war-torn land to Bavaria, that's pretty impressive. How to get those people to adopt her, that's pretty impressive. How to get the governments of this land to allow that to happen, that's really impressive. You understand, I like this, right? Man, this is what floats my cotton-picking boat. <laughs> this makes my train go choo-choo. <laughs> Buddy, I like this. Now, a few months ago, I was back over there. That was two years ago, all of that stuff. And a few months ago, I was back over there. And I'm in the same Bavaria, it's a different location, they couldn't get the same location, lots of problems for them, and I'm just standing there, it's my turn in a minute. They got their Bavarian dress on, they're backwards in some of their mentalities, and who cares? I don't care. Like I told you, I don't care what you wear. Even come nude, some do. <laughs> I teach where the only one that's got clothes on is me. So, and they think I'm stupid. So, I'm sitting there and, you know, I'm waiting on my turn. That's all I ever do is wait on my turn. I look over there and here comes this little bouncy ringlet little girl. Boom, just a little prissy thing. About that tall. She comes skipping up to me. Looking me right in the eyes. And she just puts her hands up. All right. I pick her up. She starts kissing me in her English. This is Germany. But her English, amazing. She speaks the Queen's English. I don't. She says, Brother David, I love you. I said, who are you? Oh, I'm Sophie. Bam. I said, you're so, because I don't remember, I'm sorry to you, please. I don't remember Sophie's story. I don't remember the tragedy. I don't remember the horror because I'm in it a lot. So I choose not to store that baggage because I'm the guy with the gun, remember? It's better off if it's not in there. So, I said, who are you, Sophie? And she had a picture. She said, this is me and you. 
And I took, you know, I'm being a grandpa. And I, you know, whatever, I'm accommodating. And when I saw that picture, I said, what'd you say? It was the last time I was here. It's the little girl from the car. The mummy. I said, this is you? And that's when the whole place erupted. You hear me? The best thing to do for her would have been to just pinch her head off. But now look, and her intellect is non-comparable. <laughs> she is an, she's a genius. Should have seen her kissing and hugging me. And I'd be up talking. She'd just tear out and run up there and grab me on the leg and stand on my boot. And I'd just walk with her preaching. Yeah. And she just, y'all know, isn't that awesome? Yeah. Do you hear me? This is awesome. Yeah. This is awesome. Your God is awesome. Yeah. He is dead gummit, bad to the bone. Yeah. Do you hear me? Heaven, Heaven. Declare, declare the glory, the glory. Firmament. firmament, show, show. Proclaim. proclaim the handiwork of the Lord. So, you got to understand where I'm at, right? You see where I'm at? You see why the energy, you see why the... The ferocity, the ferociousness, the fearlessness. You see why, right? It's for Sophie. It's not for me. I can offend you way easier than that. I'm telling you, you are valuable to God. The hyenas are not going to eat you. There's a plan. The crippling agents of hell are not going to kill you. There's a plan. The governments of the world are not going to be able to manipulate you. There's a plan. <laughs> she is beautiful. I don't know what to say to you. My little dark chocolate German granddaughter. <laughs> Holy, she's awesome. <sighs> this is your God I'm talking about. Do you hear me? Sophie. Less than a snowball's chance in hell. But everything hell threw at that kid, God deflected it. <laughs> Had his hand on it all the way. This broken, defiled little child. The handiwork of the Lord was in performance for her. Fully engaged to save her. Hey, everybody, chill out, old man. Yeah, surely you can make that happen, can't you? <laughs> Ms. Hogan can't quit trying. Holy Ghost. I've been married to that woman 46 years, and she's finally become my friend. <laughs> I finally trust her. And I'm happy about that. Because to me, that's not something you give away to anybody. Except the Holy Ghost. 
You see, I come to bless you, right? And there's thousands of these stories. I wish I could just sit here all night and talk to you. I just can't. I got to keep going. I bless you, though. I come here to bless you. This thing, let it touch your heart. Let your heart be touched. Let your spirit swell in this environment. Allow the glory. Heaven, Heaven. declare Declare. the glory. glory. Firmament, Firmament. Proclaim. proclaim. And show show the handiwork handiwork of the Lord. Lord. So my question, what's Sophie's future like? It's limitless. You understand that, right? And there's more. I wish I could tell you some of them. I might tomorrow tell you one more. How God's intervening in these crushed individuals. They're just singled out and crushed individuals. They're absolutely crushed. They have nothing. And then God reaches and pulls them up. (laughs) I need you to get this. I want you unbelievers, especially, go to hell. I rebuke you lying spirits. I don't fear you one bit. But you believers, I back away from you with that. And I bless you in the name of the Lord. I am not going to play this game. Do you hear me? I'm off. Uh, Listen, when I saw God reach in that little car and pull that little Sophie up and straighten her out, look, you got to understand what that does to you mentally. I saw her. I saw her. I handled her. I was crushed by her environment. And it was, she got a hold of my britches legs and was pulling on me. And I looked down at that little kid and them little arms came up. I didn't know her. Just this little chocolate thing. And I pick her up and she's kissing me. And I went, what is this? And it was a trap. I was set up by the whole bunch. (laughs) This tough soldier, you watch it, we'll crush that guy. They did. This little chocolate, dark chocolate granddaughter. Man, oh man, what what a privilege to be part of somebody's life. You hear me or not? Thank you, Miss Ogie. I bless you. I want you to want this. Because what you don't know about, also, I've been approached by seven prophets from seven different nations. And they all have exactly the same word. A prophet came to me from India, from a village. He don't even speak Hindi. He speaks a dialect. He had to speak through two interpreters in Brisbane, Australia to talk to me. He called a church and told them, there's a man coming from Mexico who raises the dead. He's an older man, and I must speak to him face to face. The church past head pastor said, there is no such man coming. Two days later, the people that handled me in Australia called him, said, David's coming. He wants to come to y'all's place. The pastor was humiliated, but the prophet called back, said, now do you believe? He said, yeah, I'll arrange the meeting. Are you hearing me how God's doing? Now, this is. This is way out there. This is, you know what they're all concerned about? God's going to let me be part of this. Because I'm just not a tolerant human on on foolishness. (laughs) You know what it's called? The third wave of energy. And the prophets say it's crashing upon us as we talk. So I need you to let it into the central Indiana. Do you hear me? I need you to let that in here. 
I need you to be a forefront, a voice for the Lord. I need you out in these cornfields to light this place on fire. I need you to want the third wave. More than likely, this will usher in the Christ. I need you to want this. Listen, these people are calling me. Listen, the value of these people are pretty important. I I could really drop some names for you and make me seem important, but I'm not. I don't agree with that. I disagree with it, actually. These people are valuable, and they know God, and each one of them have been wakened at 3 o'clock their time zone. And the angel of the Lord comes and sits, talks to them, and tells them exactly everything about my whole life. But what he won't tell them is my phone number. I love that about him. No, you got to understand, I'm particular about that. There is but very few people have that number. I just, this one right here. And it's not because I don't trust, it's just I don't trust you at all. Is honesty all right, or gotta, we got to do something else? Look, the, the, you don't need my phone number. You need Jesus. But you will need my phone number because in the last three days, I've been handling four cases. All of them are death. If God don't intervene, they're go- they'll, they'll be dead pretty soon. So you do need it. When you want it, you can find it. It's easy. My life's easy. Holy Ghost. I need you to want this. I need you to want this new energy that's coming. It, it's called a wave. It's, it's what they call in it. A wave of power, uh, energy, a new thrust. I've been in on six of them in the last 45 years. And God says it's three. You hearing me or not hearing me? But I'm going to do this. I, I'm, I'm telling you. I, I set up a while ago, travel all over India and all over southern China and the, Nepal, the Himalayas. The, you, you don't have any idea. We're going to be hiking. Oh, it's going to be awesome. Scary. Oh, my God. I set it up. I gave the light. Do it. You look at me. 65. Going to the Himalayas. That's the only mountains I haven't gone over the top of. I'm not going up that, what's the name of that thing? I'm not going up there. K2 and what's that other one? Everest. I just don't have no clue about wanting to do that. I, I'm not interested. But the people down at around 13,000 and below, I'm interested. Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. I could do it. Nope, I'm not. Holy Ghost. I want you to want this power, hey? The ones of you that are comfortable, uh, stay in your seats. Don't bother me. But you hungry people, I'm interested in walking and talking with you. Hello? Whoever that is. I don't care. It doesn't matter to me. The the flavor, color, tribe, none of that matters. Uh, Jesus is king. Shoka, taba, basha, taba. How could he single Sophie out? Night, that's impressive. But there's more of them that's equally impressive. But I like that. Do you like it? Yeah. So will you stand, please, and let's pray a little bit. And uh, We're going to pray, right? Is that okay? Deborah, por favor, que vaya orando por las cosas. ¿Está bien? Okay. Hallelujah. See, I told you I learned Spanish. That woman learned. <laughs> Holy Ghost, we're going to let the fire come. Is that okay? Start praying where we are at. Going to need some ushers. We're going to need some people. Just start praying the way you know is okay. It's great with me. I'm happy for you. Deborah, por favor, vaya orando. Ya quiero adelantar la cosa, güey. Holy Ghost, come on, fire. 
If you stand in this room and you don't know Jesus, that Jesus I just spoke of loves you. I'd like for you to come up here and let's pray together. You don't, it don't have to be me. The, the, anyone, there's lots of people here who can pray for you. But I want to ask you, you're, I want to let you know you're welcome to come. I invite you to come to my world of infinite power of, I'm never going to die. His body will stop, but not me. If you want Jesus, come. If you're backslidden your spirit, come up here. If you have an incurable disease, come up here. Please. All this is with please. Holy Ghost, come. Don't be ashamed or afraid. The ushers won't stop you. Come. Line them up, ushers, right here. What do you want? Pastor Scott and Michelle, thank you for watching Impact Television, a part of the media ministry from Forgiven Church, now in two locations, Bluffton and Fort Wayne, Indiana. Great things continue to happen at Forgiven Church, and we want to give you a special invite to attend one of our life-changing services. Whether you'll be attending church for the first time, haven't been to church in a long time, or maybe you're in transition for a new place to worship, we invite you to a place where we are not perfect, but we know that we are forgiven. For more information, you can go to our website at ForgivenOnline.org. Again, that is ForgivenOnline.org. God bless you. We look forward to seeing you at church.